When Magarix invaded Roman Greece, he did so under the cover of darkness. His army marched from Perinthus into the king of Illyria's lands, and for nine days they moved only at night, marching at a practice speed only his veterans could have managed. For this expedition, at great expense from the royal coffers, fully half of Magarix's warriors were equipped with heavy mail and iron helmets, fashioned either in the forges of Ancyra or looted from the armories of the Thracians and Seleucids. This slowed the progress of the Gauls, who normally can move across country with frightening alacrity, but not enough to prevent them from coming within 10 miles of Larissa within a fortnight. Roman Greece was poorly defended, with the two great cities of Larissa and Apollonia garrisoned entirely by allied Italian soldiers and not by Rome's own legions. It was not beyond possibility that the Romans had an army encamped within the hills to the west, and Magarix conducted his campaign upon the assumption that this was the case, with memories of the troc by defeat in Thracia still relatively fresh in his mind. The Italians, under the command of the governor, Decimus Curvus, marshaled five miles from the city, opting to fight the battle upon a wooded hillside rather than within the streets of Larissa itself, for it had no walls with which to aid the defenders. I remain uncertain of Curvus's personal fate, but his army of unwilling Italians was sadly defeated by the superior numbers and experience of the Galatian shield wall. The Gauls took their heads, their gold, and their provisions, and moved into the city, looting and pillaging as is their way. Meanwhile, across the Mediterranean, one of Magarix's kinsmen, a tetrarch by the name of Britomaros, had been observing for some time the curious fate of Legio VIII Liberatrix. Britomaros had spent the better part of a year marching his sizeable army around the Mediterranean coast by land, for two reasons. The first was the natural Gallic aversion to seafaring upon the open ocean. The second was because he wished to avoid the harmful attention of pirates as well as the overly inquisitive Roman fleets. The eastern Mediterranean was nominally the domain of Ptolemy's great warships, but in recent years the coffers of Egypt were being drained more and more by their ongoing conflict with Rome, and the safety of the seas was no longer guaranteed. So Britomaros and his warriors went by land, making slow progress, doing no small amount of damage to the countryside along their way. By the time they reached Libya, attrition had done its work and his force was smaller than the one he had originally set off with from Ancyra. However, Ptolemy could not afford to be anything but grateful for their help. Britomaros marched in tow behind Egypt's royal army, led by a general called Hippocrates, taking care to appear as though his men were mercenaries in the employ of Egypt, rather than marching under Galatian banners. Hippocrates' army eventually met the 8th Legion upon the road to Cyrene, but Britomaros and his warriors remained encamped upon a hillside watching, much to the protestation of the Greeks. But the chieftain had not yet received word from Ancyra that war had begun against the Romans, and so he stayed put. Hippocrates won the battle regardless, thanks in large part both to the Gallic mercenaries who really were in the pay of the Egyptian throne, as well as the 60 armoured war elephants from Syria which sowed panic and chaos amongst a Roman army exhausted and demoralised from months of marching under the baking sun of Africa. It is said that some of Britomaros' men snuck out from his camp and joined the battle regardless, frustrated at having been denied the opportunity for glory and treasure, but few came back. For though the Ptolemaic army was victorious, their casualties were heavy, and any further advance towards Kyrene was halted. It was no later than the following morning that a messenger finally arrived at Britomaris's tent, conveying a coded message in Greek that informed the Gauls of Magarix's march through Macedonia. At once, they broke camp and made chase along the road to the city, where they caught the tattered remnants of the Roman army in the open field. The battle was as one-sided as they come, with only one full cohort of legionaries still in attendance, supported only by Italians and Sicilians. So it was then that as Magarix began his march westwards towards Apollonia, Britomaros arrived at the walled city of Cyrene and began his siege. For my part, I was elsewhere at this time, and so have been forced to assemble the previous account through the recorded words and deeds of my contemporaries. I remained in Ancyra, where I was tasked with training a new corps of soldiers for Galatia. Many of Magarix's veterans were, by now, getting older, and the sons of these men, who once fought in the king's earliest battles in Cappadocia and Lydia, were now of fighting age. 
There was also a pressing need for a more professional class of soldier to keep Galatia's fledgling empire intact, and also to meet upon the battlefield the disciplined armies of Rome in the west and Persia in the east. Thus, the king tasked me with training and equipping this force, drawing upon all my previous military experience to do so. It came with the caveat, however, that every man would be a fresh recruit with no previous experience, with the exception of the officers, who would be initially selected from proven veterans of Magarix's own tribe. We selected new young men for the simple reason that Magarix decided, using a curious expression, that it is much too difficult to teach an old dog new tricks. And he was correct. The Royal Comitatus enlisted the services of some of the most talented fighters in the Mediterranean, but with this experience and history of success came an attitude of always knowing best, and a resistance to change. For these new cohorts, fresh blood would be needed, and fresh blood was to be found aplenty from the sons of the Galatian noblemen and farmers alike. I had them drilled in the Roman fashion as best as I could remember it from my days as a tribune. They were organised into groups of eight men, who trained, fought, and lived together in the same camp tent. The officers were given leave to flog and beat any who shirked from the strict discipline we enforced, and all of them were denied any contact with their families or loved ones, nor with the opposite sex entirely. Though the latter point was routinely difficult to enforce, and thus carried harsher and harsher punishments as time went on. A Gallic army is used to marching with its families and clan in tow, but with these men, things were going to be different. They were made to march 22 miles a day around Ankyra's outskirts, up into the hills and back down again, all the while carrying their own equipment instead of leaving it with a ponderous baggage train. The finest among them were given the honour of carrying the Carnix into battle, others the sacred boar standards. There were no legionary eagles here in Galatia. Before long, the first cohorts were ready, and I could do little more than offer a sacrifice to Mars for their future success. I shall not pretend that I did the finest job of training them, I lacked the resources and experience of the best military men in Rome, but I remained confident that their natural Gallic aggression, their fearlessness in the face of death and their thirst for glory would see them through, wherever my own efforts might have failed. Soon enough they began the long march west and I rode with them, hoping for the best, but quietly expecting the worst, for I knew whence all roads lead, and whom awaited us at the end of them. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back once again to Rome 2 Total War, the Galatia Campaign. And guess what we've just got? It's been, it's the following turn from the end of the last episode, and we have the Nitos military reforms. Dramatic political and military events have shaken the Celtic world. We have come into contact with many different cultures as our territories expanded, each bringing their own knowledge of tactics and equipment. As a result of increased contact with the heavily armed forces of the Mediterranean peoples, Wealthier elements of Celtic society are now equipping themselves as heavy infantry and heavy cavalry. <clears throat> this change has opened new possibilities for the army. The warrior class has greatly expanded, with leaders who have expressed their willingness to pay for the equipment of their soldiers in order to defend the expanding territory from the myriad foreign threats outside Celtic domains. Improvements in the training um, and iron technology... Uh, let me start that again. Improvements in training and iron technology give rise to a more professional soldier who sees warfare as his primary duty. These soldiers are tactically proficient and disciplined in formation. Now it's time to lay the foundations of a new military. New reforms usually open up new equipment and new ways of combat, not necessarily stronger overall, but usually more efficient for the time and for the challenges presented ahead. Some reforms can require a period of adaptation to these, the new tactics. Study well the differences in your troops, because this can mean the difference between victory and defeat. Um, ah, we have some sort of jerk on the politics screen causing trouble. Your spoilt son has fought with a prominent member of a rival tribe. Who would that be? Dawilos, we reckon. Um, a nine-year-old boy. Uh, tensions have increased as a result. The elders look to you to settle the matter. Do nothing. These things are inevitable. The situation will calm down. Criticize his opponent. Send him away. Chastise him, give him a public rebuke in those uncertain words. No, with the king. We're the king, and he's, he's you know... I'm going to criticise his opponent. Maybe not the best thing to do. This is probably what Melina would want Magrix to do, though, so... 
Let's see if that backfires or not. Oh, also, Magrix himself has a level up at the moment, actually. So let's see. What do we feel like uh, upgrading here? Patron of the military. Yep. Lower upkeep is nice. Skill tactician. Sure. More morale. Ferocious warrior. More morale during offensive battles. Let's go with those. Alright. Um, now we need to switch up our research again. I don't remember. I don't recall exactly what we were researching before, actually. Might have been this one. That sort of rings a bell. Maybe we should work on something economic, though, for a while. Let's go with Celtic Plow. Let's go with that. Um, okay. Now, here is my question. Reform unit. Okay, I'm trying to see if any of our stuff can be reformed. It's kind of looking like the answer is no, though. There's no further reform available for this unit in this province. Okay, oh, maybe it's the province is the issue then. I'm not sure. Interesting. For the tribe! Uh, what can you recruit, my dude? Nitos, cannot recruit unit. You've re recruited the maximum number of units into this army. Oh, okay, right. Well, in that case... Yeah, Nitos, um, these are Galatian legionaries. The Celts have fought the Romans more than they're prepared to admit. This is a two-way street. Yeah, we, these guys have amazing stats. Melee attack, 16. Defense, 16. Uh, armor, 38. Not as good as the Galatian Thorax infantry on the whole, but um, they're cheaper. And rather importantly, I believe they come from a lower class of citizen. Yeah, they do. They come from the Gaisati rather than the Equites, like the, um, the Thorax infantry do. So, um, they are much more reasonable to... Re <coughs> excuse me. Much more reasonable to recruit in large numbers. Which uh, helps a great deal. So, I mean, they are cheaper as well, which helps. Yeah, um, this army here, this army here, all of you guys, this is going to seem a little extreme, but uh, all those shield wall infantry, battle, there is no finer you're getting replaced by uh, Galatian legionaries. Yes, you are. Let's see if we can recruit any over here, can we? No. I live to serve the people of gold. Uh, I mean, we've got to convert this, haven't we, anyway, so. Meeting ground. What is this we've got here? A valetudinarium. Public order. Sanitation. Uh, what do we want to turn that into? Followers of Bellinus, maybe? And Roman small town. It needs to be a barbarian town. And then this, apparently this olive oil trader can be upgraded to an olive oil market if we want to. Don't know if I'm going to do that right now, though, just because it will lower public order. Uh, oh, hello, Ptolemaic fleet. How are you guys doing there? Pride of the two lands. Let's see your Roman fleet over there. Britomaris is here ready to attack Kyrene. Um, and I should note as well, by the way, he's got elephants now. I merged his two damage units of Gaisartes, uh, of Naked Fanatics, and um, left a space in his army, and I decided to hire some mercenary elephants just for giggles. Felt like something Britomaris would probably do on a whim, so... <laughs> I figured we might as well do it. Uh, the, the downside, I suppose, is that uh, the, uh, the army's going to consume a lot more supplies as a result of having those elephants. But... Um, uh, looks like the local supply availability is actually pretty, pretty good, though, to be fair, so that's all right. Um, so, yeah, he's going to attack Kyrene just momentarily, I think. I'm just wondering if there's anything else we need to do up here. I live to serve the Other than, gosh, I'd really like Magarix's army to have some Galatian legionaries in it, but... Uh, 
that's going to be difficult to achieve out here in the sticks. At least until um, at least until this meeting ground is converted, then we'll be able to recruit Nitos from it as long as there's enough population nearby. Because right now there's only a hundred Gaisate, which is not brilliant. So, hmm. what could we do? I could hire a general to recruit. Because there's 944 Gaisata here in, on Pulpodeva. That's loads there. And we've got Proving Grounds. Which... is not actually that good, I think. It doesn't re Unlocks recruitment of Chokman Cal Reos. Let me just check here. Oh, it's the one next up from the meeting ground, so that's fine. Yeah, okay. Um, so... What I could do is raise an army here. You guys are both Council of Chieftains, huh? Let's go with the Castle Valaunos here. And you can, yep, yeah, you can just have a little bodyguard like that. And your job, my friend, is to recruit. Not enough manpower available. Oh, yeah, your job basically is just to recruit loads of Gal Galatian legionaries. That are being trained by, uh, you know, by Lentulus, the Gaul, and um, you're going to take them to the front line wherever Magrix happens to be, and we're going to swap the units in and out, basically, um, to replace some of his old, his older warriors, the ones that are worth getting rid of anyway, because some of these are obviously quite experienced. So, you know, oh, melee defense twenty-seven. It's obviously better than the uh, than these guys in terms of melee defense. Actually, it's a lot better. But that's that's a different thing. Ready the the great thing about these guys is they are really good on the defense. They, their melee attack is kind of pants though. But so they're really really good at holding the line. But they don't get much actual killing done. Plus, there's other factors as well, like the Nitos, the uh, the Galatian legionaries can do things like form testudo um, and do other stances as well that makes them a lot more useful. I mean, they can go in defensive formation, which immediately boosts their melee defense up, like, really dramatically as well, so, um, it's not as clear-cut as the unit card stats say, actually, to be fair. Um, so anyway. It'd be nice if we could get some legionaries out here to you, uh, Britta Maras, actually, I have to admit, even if it's just a few units. Hmm. I'm wondering where the Romans are, though, as usual. The cheeky sods seem to be hiding from me. I'm sure they had more than one army out here, unless they moved it somewhere else. Anyway, folks, let's take Kyrene. So what have they got? They've got a couple of little boats, and then they've got a garrison army. And because they're the Romans... They, I, I forgot this was a thing temporarily, and, and it was pointed out to me in the comments why this, why this is happening um, last time. But basically, because the Romans are the Romans in Divide et Impera, they get a big auto-resolve bonus, which is supposed to mostly help them um, conquer other enemy AIs and expand across the map, you know, in a vaguely historical manner. So they get a big um, flat bonus to all their auto-resolve battle results. And that does actually include against us, the player, so... Um, the auto-resolve when we're fighting the Romans cannot ever be relied upon. We'll have to fight pretty much every battle against them manually, because uh, otherwise they get their ridiculous bonus, because right now, if we were to auto-resolve this, we would lose, in spite of the fact that their army in there is absolute trash. Uh, so, yeah, that's the whole thing we're going to need to do. Can we just start off with two ladders? Confused. Anyway, I've, I've queued up a bunch of ladders. Maybe a battering ram as well while we're at it? Yeah. Hell, actually, you know what? Towers would be a good idea. Right, that siege might last a little while we get the, uh, while we get the equipment ready, because Kyrene does have significant stone walls around it, so... That one might take a while, and we're also going to be having... Attrition! the entire time that's going on as well, which is a bit of a pain in the bum, but never mind. Never mind. Uh, right. I live to serve the people of Meanwhile, Ready for orders. I'm not sure we really want to stop here. I 
think we want to move on and take Apollonia as soon as possible, really. Although, I am concerned about Larissa's public order. Um, because a lot of it is being propped up at the moment by characters. It might be positive. I mean, the characters is plus 18 right now, and they're at plus 19 public order, so... I think if we were to move both these armies out, it would still be a plus one. I hope that's correct. No, it's just minus five. It's minus six. Never mind. The wonderful thing about Rome 2 is we can go to the politics tab and we can get somebody to kind of fix that. Um, where who's who's happy with us? Who's angry with us? Okay, all all sort of political parties, if you like, are all fairly happy with us, which is good. Um, they're all pretty darn happy. Uh, where's Melina? There she is. Melina? I would like you to go organize games in Macedon. There you go. Good lass. Okay. Uh, Apollonia, founded in 588 BCE by Greek colonists from Corfu and Corinth, Apollonia grew rich on local agriculture, the slave trade, and its large harbour, as well as the local supply of asphalt. Descendants of the original Greek colonists ruled over a population of mostly, mostly Illyrian origin. In the last few decades, however, the city has been controlled by Pyrrhus of Epirus, who has launched his wars. Well, that's very out-of-date information, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, um... All right, Magrix Milato. Um, does this place have walls? It doesn't have, does it? I think we're going to be just heading straight in there. Although I am noticing, Kakstos's army, which is no longer led by Kakstos, let we lest we forget, it's led by Iakos now. Um, yeah, their movement is nowhere near as good as Magrix's is. On the move, lads. So. I mean, Magrix could totally take Apollonia by himself, I think. But, um... He might take additional casualties that I don't want to take in the process, and then it would leave us vulnerable to a counter-attack from across the, uh... Uh, the... not the Aegean. The Adriatic, that's it. Um, so... I'm not gonna do that. I don't know what's lurking on in, in, in the boot of Italy right now, in the fog of war. So, I'm going to have you guys stick together. Let's be cautious, okay? Let's be cautious. Unlike Britain Morris, who's being the opposite of cautious right now. <laughs> um, can we do any, like, coordinated war target stuff? I think we should be able to. There we go. Get the Ptolemies to wander on over here with a stack of their own troops and give us a hand. Is the idea, I think, in, in, in theory. That should hopefully work like that. I, I, this, the war coordinate, coordination target is interesting because sometimes it works superbly well and sometimes the AI just ignores it completely. So, we'll, we'll see. But, um... I have had it work magnificently before. I did a, I did a campaign as the Arverni over in Gaul um, once and I had a lot of... It was a, a tricky campaign because I had to balance alliances with the other tribes and stuff in order to be able to actually get an advantage over the others because it's got it's a whole bunch of little factions with one city and the same exactly the same sized army so whether or not you could make any progress was determined entirely by um, whether or not you could forge alliances and make use of them and when I was doing that little campaign the war coordination target fe feature worked perfectly I was able to get my allies to come and help me besiege various cities so I could keep unifying Gaul um, don't know how well it's gonna work here though I'm waffling aren't I I'm really doing a lot of waffling today folks I shall return all right, this is interesting. Um, so uh, during the end turn sequence here, the Illyrians are offering to join the war against Rome for a payment of 13,800 gold. And this is way, way less than I had to offer to get them to potentially agree to it when we were messing around with it last turn in the, in the diplomacy men menu. So I think for such a paltry sum, out of our rather vast treasury. I can't afford not to say yes to this. I'm hoping they don't swoop in and take Apollonia straight away, right from out, out from under my nose. Um, but 
I'm thinking this is too good to turn down. So yeah, you know what, Illyria? You want to join the war against Rome? Have at it, my friends. Here's your money. My words were heard in good faith, then. You have proved worthy with this acceptance. I can't, uh, I can't promise you your uh, long-term health is going to be t particularly good, my Illyrian friends, because uh, once Rome has been humbled, I'm sure the Galatians would be looking at your lands and rubbing their hands together and thinking, gosh, it would be awfully nice if we had those too. However, I don't know if we'll actually end up seeing that within the course of this particular campaign series. Um, as I've said before, my long-term goal for this series is to sack Rome. And once that's done, that'll probably be the end of the series, and we can just sit back and speculate what would happen to the Galatian Empire after that. But, um... Yes, there we go. Nice. Oh, they're on the move already. I like it. Well, this could have gone better. Reinforcing your son's impulsive behavior has left a stain on your reputation. Your followers now trust you less, and rivals think you short-sighted... Probably meant to say short-sighted. And easy to manipulate. Influence minus 12 tribal chiefs. Um, has that knocked us down from beloved to admired? Yeah, quite a bit it has, actually. Well, that's just annoying. Have we got any characters we can promote? Yeah, we do, you know. Uh, Yaros, he's probably due a promotion, isn't he? He's not doing much these days, Yaris. He's just kind of securing the eastern provinces and ruling over them and probably having a jolly good time doing it. Um, but there you go. There's a promotion. It's going to piss these guys off, but I can live with it. And... Britta Morris, he doesn't get one yet. Anyone else able to have a promotion? Melissa can. I don't know who she is, though. Swordsman husband? She's obviously somebody's wife, but... Ad Coros, Eros's, Britomaros's, I have no idea. Um, she might be Eros's wife, I think, but I'm not totally sure. She's been around l long enough, so maybe, maybe, yeah. That would make sense, because only him and her have the ability to be promoted. So that... That did not bias the influence I thought it would. Interesting. Could have, could have sworn that would, but never mind. Um, what else could we do? Oh, we could do gather support. That's the other thing. Melina's really good at that, isn't she? Because um, she's got such high authority. Mind you, Agrius can do it too, actually, these days. He's got 12 in authority, zeal, and cunning these days, so... There we go. That uh, makes a bit of a difference, doesn't it? Alright, let's avoid pissing off the other parties too much, but... It would be nice if we could just squeeze it over the line, you know? There we go, we're back up to Beloved for now. Handy, very, very handy. Alright! Meanwhile, we'll encircle it for now. We'll bring up um, Iarkos, so he can assist in the siege. Uh, Abelios here, our little scout, can level up. Uh, at this point, I'm just I'm almost picking things to level up at random. I don't use my agents very much for, you know, actually important stuff. I, I, I very much under underutilize these guys, actually. So, whatever. Um, I just use them as scouts, and that's basically it. Um, the Brazen Bears! Fight with us. It's a good life. I could just recruit the one from there. And my question is, Anthea, do you have more guys? You've got tons of guys, Sato, for us to recruit with. So, let's move you over here for Cass of Alaunus. And we need good fighters. Fantastic. Getting the uh, getting the troops together there. Honor the gods and your Same over here. To do your duty to the tribe. 
Brilliant. The new the new model army of Galatia is uh, is is coming together quite nicely. All right, so that's that under siege. How's Kyrene doing? Ah, the Ptolemies have arrived. Perfect. Ah, brilliant. The feature worked exactly the way I hoped it would. So they've arrived to assist us in the siege. Yeah, yeah, now the auto-resolve result is looking a hell of a lot more in our favour. <laughs> what have they got with them, anyway? Klerukoi, Thorakitai, Falangitai. Ooh, some pretty good armoured pikemen, then. This is a proper Ptolemaic army, this is right here. They've got armoured elephants, they've got pikemen, they've got Galatian mercenaries, they've got their cavalry, more Galatian mercenaries. Oh, they've even got a siege weapon, they've got a Polybolos. That's pretty sweet. I wish I had one of those. Right now, though, all we've got is a light battering ram. I think some ladders. I'm not sure. Um, and we're working on a siege tower. So we're going to have to continue, I think, for now, unfortunately, just because we need siege equipment. But, uh, yep, we've got the Ptolemies to help us out. I mean, I could cheese it and just auto-resolve, but I really don't want to. It just seems, seems poor form, honestly. I could also resolve it now, and with my two ladders and battering ram, I could take the entire city with the help of these guys, but... Nah. Nah, this looks like it could be quite an epic siege. I don't want to order resolve that stuff. We'll do it properly. Um, speaking of sieges, though... It's about time we had a battle, I think. Also, oh, my god, what's happened to this garrison? They're in pretty bad shape, aren't they? <laughs> wow, okay. Well, anyway, folks, see you in a minute. All right, ladies and gentlemen, tribes ready for war, more or less. Although formation, guys, honestly, this is just this is just dreadful. What are you doing? Warriors, Get it together! Get Goodness me, for heaven's sake! The Romans have got a little boat over here that's about to unload its cargo on this beach. I think potentially. Um, yeah, not sure what they're hoping to achieve, other than do a bit of scouting, I suppose. We got uh, Magrix and the Arcos' forces all lined up here, as you can see. Chariots, slingers, the whole front line of shield wall infantry. We got some Gaisati moving up here to secure this left flank on this side here. Big sort of uh, wall of shields and spears at the front with the Thorax infantry mixed in with some of the old um, Thurius infantry forming the second line behind them kind of basing it a little bit off the way the very late Roman legions worked in sort of the late antiquity period where the front ranks would be armed with spears and the rear ranks would be armed with swords. Um, didn't work quite like this, but it's a vaguely similar concept basically, is what I'm thinking. Big bristling line of spears in front, guys with uh, swords in, in back. Um, makes sense in my brain anyway. Uh, and then I got guys Sarte, my um, naked fanatics on this flank, flank on this flank, and I've got also with these guys on this flank um, some of the armored swordsmen. And yeah, I've got Magrix and the Arcos with their bodyguards at the back in the middle here, so they're out of harm's way for the moment. I've got baggage trains lined up, and we've got the archers and missile units at the very back rank, uh, cavalry on both flanks as well. It's the usual kind of formation, really. Um, I think the enemy's all up in that town beyond our line of sight at the moment, so... Let's get marching, boys. Although, actually, I'm going to send a couple of units of cavalry up the coast to scout out the town and also try and intercept those uh, sailors before they can get to the town as well. found most of their army. It seems to be pouring out the rear entrance to the town here, along in this direction. Ah, oh, you poor sods. You're not even proper legionaries. They're just Italian 
sort of levees, really. You see, there being a pretty important distinction between Romans and Italians in this period of history. Um, the, you know, Rome at this point, when you said Rome, you were referring very specifically to a city. You were not talking about an empire at this point. Um, and the citizens of the other Italian cities on the peninsula, you know, they didn't have full citizenship rights the same way Roman citizens did. And it was a point of serious contention, really. Um, you know, wars were fought over it, um, particularly in the area of, 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 of Marius and Sulla. There was the so-called social war where, um, you know, a whole load of... Um, the Italian tribes and cities and whatnot, like the Samnites, and that rose up and fought against the Romans. And of course, when Hannibal invaded much earlier on as well, you know, a lot of the a lot of the local Italian cities rebelled and actually sided with the Carthaginians against the Romans, which should probably show you just how much they hated the Romans. Uh, So these guys, these poor Italians here, you know, they've basically been press ganged into doing this, um, and I don't envy them, frankly. If I were them, I'd probably just surrender. But anyway. Looks like they're coming to us, which is rather fascinating. Perhaps they wish to die warriors' deaths. How very Klingon of them. <laughs> I approve. Let's see what they do. All right, little brother, it's beginning. Just trying to the enemy's hidden units. squeeze my rear line a little bit closer up against the front line there. Sort of tricky to do though, realizing the front line's such a bit of a skew if angle in the middle. But uh, we've already started chucking projectiles, so. Our hidden units have been discovered! These are some brave, brave fools. Those were some brave, brave fools. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Brutal. One of our units has used all its ammunition. They got some of their cavalry straight into the shield wall. Not going to have much luck there, boys. Indeed, they are not. This is quite fun, actually. We don't usually get to have a nice close-up view of the battle like this, but One of our units has used all its, ammunition. it's so one-sided, I don't really have to micromanage anything. They're already running away, yep. Yeah. Victory, there it is. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and say in my head that they've decided to surrender. They made an effort. They made a token effort. But now they've thrown down their arms and they've basically just decided, right, we're not doing this. We're not dying for the Romans' sake. And I'll accept their surrender. Not even worth saving the replay for that one, I don't think. 7,077 men deployed, six losses. <laughs> Those must have been from the initial cavalry skirmish as well, I have to imagine. Goodness me. Guy is bibulous. If he's not hung, drawn, and quartered by his own, by, by his own Italian soldiers, I am... I'm certain he's probably already fleeing. Well, that's that then. Do you know, honestly? I'm gonna say that we're gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna keep running with this whole they surrendered narrative here, and I'm gonna say that on the condition of their surrender, basically, we the Magarix has promised not to uh you know not to absolutely completely total their town. So I think we'll just occupy, we'll get five hundred gold out of it and way less um, public order issues. Peacefully occupy the settlement and all captives are released. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to go with. We don't do that very often as the Galatians. Normally we just loot and pillage 
all the time. It's going to be a different story when we get into Italy, I think, perhaps, and certainly when we get to Rome, but uh, I think for my money, this kind of makes sense. We're sending a message to the other Italian cities, you know. If you guys want to just surrender and turn, turn, you know, turncoat and side with the Galatians, well, we'll treat you well. Anyway, um, so we've got Apollonia. Um, the Illyrians have joined us in the war. Hopefully, they'll be they'll start attacking Italy from the north, up that in that sort of direction. That's that's what I'd like. That's what I'd like them to do. And uh, yeah, then there's still the ongoing siege of Cyrene here in North Africa. Um, I'm curious. I've never really been in a position to do this before, but um, can we set more than one war coordination target? Is that a thing that's possible to do? Oh my god, I've just noticed that the Lugoth, I think that's how you pronounce it, um, Lugoths, um, they actually control a little chunk of northern Italy there. These are the guys that the Illyrians have been trying to get me to join their war against for quite a long time. These dudes here... They're a Germanic faction. Well, yeah, I mean, they're the Leogoths, right? So that's rather fascinating. I had no idea the Romans were getting their asses kicked by a bunch of Germanic tribes marching their way down over the Alps. That's awfully, uh... I mean, that's like... I'm going to go ahead and say that's like, you know, eight, eight, seven or eight centuries ahead of schedule. Um, but that's fascinating regardless. Um, I'm going to set a war coordination target there, though. Unless... No, that's just that's just removed the one that was at... Yeah, okay, I can only set one at a time. That's that's kind of annoying. Bit of a shame. Never mind. Uh, right. Ooh, yeah, look at that. Rome's having a bad, bad year right now. I don't know if they ever had Potavium in the first place, admittedly, but I assume they did. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Interesting. That spices things up a bit, because these guys are very much not fans of ours, the Leogoths. They don't like us particularly, and they they really don't like our allies, the Illyrians, either. Hmm. Aggressive and devious to boot. Fascinating. They're at war with the Scordisci, our friends on the other side of the Danube, I should point out, the ones we have a non-aggression pact with. The Illyrians, Rome, and also the Erevisci, who are up here. They do like us. Oh, that's interesting. A new challenger enters the ring, ladies and gentlemen. The, 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 the Goths. Leo Goths. Whoever they are, whatever we're calling them. Bunch of rampaging Germans, ladies and gentlemen. Um, they're a problem we might end up having to deal with, too. Oh, fascinating. Okay, anyway, well, that's that's a twist, isn't it? Um, okay, right. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, not much else to do in the meantime. We're still besieging Cyrene and recruiting more Galatian legionaries who might be very, very useful if we have to deal with a bunch of marauding Germans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this campaign just keeps getting more and more interesting as it goes on. I love it. It's just so good. I think it's over here in the east anyway. Meshan is marching up and down on my territory again, which I don't particularly take kindly to, but they seem to have no interest in actually attacking me, so I'm sort of okay with it, really. Um, Thirsty for battle. Yeah. Yaros is just basically still sat on his ass just outside of Dura. Um, enjoying himself, I guess. Enjoying himself with his very slightly small, very outdated army. Just kind of patrolling the eastern provinces and keeping an eye on everything and probably lining his pockets with fabulous amounts of riches in the process. Um, I like to think maybe he's put on weight, you know. I live to serve the people yeah, Aros is like sort of like aged now to the point where he's, he's become this sort of fat eastern governor. Like <laughs> sat on a throne covered in jewellery. <laughs> kind of, he's gone ever so slightly native, you know. Uh, got a big curly beard, sort of like, uh, you know, t typical Mesopotamian style. Like, <laughs> it's, it's fun to think about, isn't it? Um, anyway. Yeah, I'll be back when some more interesting stuff's happening. Well, this is a new one. 
The head of an enemy warrior taken in battle has started talking to its owner. It repeatedly speaks of the doom of our people. Uh, we can visit the head. You should verify these claims before making any rash decisions. Making Make an offering to the gods. As surely as the work of the gods, we must make offerings to appease their anger or dispose of the head. This is the work of some dark creature. We must burn it or do nothing. This is the idle gossip of farmers and fishermen. Nothing more. Um, I think it would be very on brand of us to make offerings to the gods. We're a superstitious bunch, and Melina, particularly, is a very, very, very superstitious lady. So, make offerings to the gods. Wonder how that's going to turn out. Uh, anyway, in the meantime... The gods and your ancestors. Uh, not enough manpower, huh? Is there enough manpower over in Nicomodea, do you think? Probably. I would say there's probably plenty. Yes. Well, you're not going to be able to get there this turn. How frustrating. Baton Odessos. Yeah, plenty there. For the drive. Move out. Send you up the road. Getting on our way. To recruit some more. We need good fighters. There we go. That is... Getting close to a full stack of legionaries, actually. That's pretty awesome, to be honest. Um, Ad Coro. Cannot recruit unit. Maximum. Oh, right. The, the army's full. Uh, he's got his the maximum he can get of legionaries. I guess the small issue now is that the only spearmen in the army are the, uh, are the naked fanatics. But that's okay. I'm pretty sure these guys can do some sort of anti-cavalry stance anyway. I'm not totally sure on that, but I think that's the case. So, yeah. What do I want to do with you guys? Just have you sit around and guard the home front? I want to try and ship you off somewhere. Trouble is, the waters of the Mediterranean are full of big, nasty Roman fleets that could sink you very easily. Oh, hello. Speaking of nasty Romans... Legio 1 Italica and Legio 2 Equestris are over here in Sicily, outside Syracuse. I wonder what they're doing. Fascinating. Hi. Don't see any other uh, Romans out here, though, in, uh, in Africa right now. Uh, okay, well... Apollonia, we're, yeah, we're still in the process of converting all these buildings, but Apollonia is relatively happy right now. Plus 37 public order is not bad. Um, the interesting and tricky bit is going to be whether or not we can get across the straits here. Into the boot of Italy. Without, you know. Without getting sunk. <laughs> That's the tricky bit, you see. That is the awfully, awfully tricky bit. Can we put you in the in the port, ready to go? Yeah, of course. Yeah, we can. For the tribe. Let's pop you in the town, Magrix, as well. And we'll give it a turn, and I'll see if I can get them both across here to attack Taras or Tarantum, if you prefer, or indeed Taranto, if you prefer. Um, within one turn without getting stranded in the middle of the Adriatic and easy prey for the Roman Navy. Attack! Meanwhile, over here... Let them cower before us. We've got some ladders, we've got a bashing round. I don't know, this is weird, there's this one ladder times two. Are they just free ladders that we get at the start of a siege battle? It's confusing to me, because it's got a different like background colour to the other siege items we've built. <laughs> So, but I assume, I assume, I guess we get some free ladders. Then we got a battering ram, and then we got a siege, two pair of siege towers. I think I want to wait one more turn, so we got another couple of siege towers, and then we'll go. Not will escape. I am, cool. I am conscious of the fact though that we are taking attrition during this siege, but um, I think we're going to do this properly. Oh yeah, belly officer, you. My son. I love the sea. I love the sea. <laughs> Weirdo. Settlement sabotage. Reconnoiter. 
give it a go. Oh, I see. You've got to go all the way around there to get onto land, have you? Awkward, but fine. We need to get start scouting out the Italian peninsula, don't we, really? Meanwhile, any news for what's going on up here? Um, Norea. Forms the capital of the Celtic Kingdom of Noricum, or at least it did. They've got um, a champion hanging out outside Norea, observing things, although I don't see any of these uh, Germanic armies yet. Just this just this city. Interesting. Alright, well, I'm still keeping an eye on that, but for now, all seems to be well at the moment. God, you got to love our empire's border gore, haven't you? I mean, just look at that. It's just filthy. <laughs> oh, it's just filthy. I mean, you know... What I'd love to be able to do is just sort of incorporate Pergamon into our empire, you know, confederate with them. And then maybe eventually do something similar with Illyria, but um, I doubt that would really work. Probably have to fight the Illyrians eventually. But then you'd have we'd have a much prettier looking empire, wouldn't we, if we did that. But uh, never mind, I don't really mind. Do you know what I like? The, you know, Border Gore is not something the, 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 the people in the classical period really cared about anyway. I mean, the Romans had their fair share of what you would call border gore at various points in their history, because they had a lot of sort of allied cities, a bit like Pergamum here, which was sort of nominally autonomous, but really they were vassals of Rome and what have you. And when you see a lot of those maps of the Roman Empire at various stages, you just go Google image search, you know, map of Roman Empire or whatever. Um, a lot of the a lot of the bits of the map that are painted red are actually you know places like this, which are you know. They were they were sort of vassal states of the Romans, you know, client kingdoms and what have you, rather than actually being part of directly ruled Roman territory. But uh, anyway, um, wrong button, folks. I shall return once again with more news, even if that news is simply we're going to attack Cyrene. The offerings were made, and the head fell silent. The gods were properly appeased. We made the right choice there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we propositioned the gods and they've uh, we've been given a good omen, so plus four public order. Unfortunately, I do have a small food shortage problem. I do have a small food shortage problem. Um, I'm going to have to upgrade the, sh the, the fields in Hatra, I think. Uh, this needs to go from fields to farms. And um, in the meantime, Kubaba, foreign agent, hanging out up here, huh? Oh, hello from Colchis. Um, okay, good, good, good. Yeah, we're actually we're losing some money at the moment as well. I've recruited rather a lot of units. <laughs> That's kind of expensive, so. Colchis and Meshan are at war, apparently. Attrition, yeah. And siege at Cyrene. Alright, well. I think you've got more than enough uh, legionaries. Let's start marching you down in this sort of direction, Milado. It's going to take you a few turns to get there, but uh, it'll be worth it when you do. Right, um... Meanwhile, what else can we do? I, I mean, can I raise taxes a little bit without buggering everything up? Our taxes are like the absolute minimum at the moment, so... Helps a lot with public order. There we go, I've raised taxes ever so slightly. Hopefully that doesn't cause too many issues, although... Mm, you say that, but let's do a little scan of the empire here. Most places are still very good public order. Um, yeah, pretty much everywhere except the places we've recently conquered, I guess, which makes sense. We can temporarily kind of fix the food problem by getting, oh, I don't know, a weedier here from the Trokmai uh, to. Let's see, not send a diplomat, send an emissary to Macedonia since there's a bit of a food shortage there. That'll fix the food shortage for this turn. And we could get her, no, not her. Let, we could go, who else could we get? Let's say Adgina from the Council of Chieftains to uh, organize games 
in Macedonia as well. There we go. There we go. That's righted the ship a little bit. It's expensive to do that, but we do have an awful lot of money, so it kind of works. Right. So, um, the Romans are moving. Le Legio to Equestris is making its way north up the boot of Italy towards Taras. Legio 10 Macedonica has been presumably very relatively newly recruited. We've got Legio 1 Italica on a ship headed in our direction. There's the Ptolemaic fleet over here though, of course, mind you, so... Um, we could seize the initiative and try and attack Taras. I'm going to quick save before we do this, because I don't know whether or not we can actually do it. But... Can we within one turn? We can. Maintain blockade. Let's move you out here as well. And we'll make an amphibious assault. Uh, we could auto resolve this. It is tempting to do so, but I don't think I will. Uh, we'll do it properly. Fight on the battlefield. Bunch of g g Gallic longships coming ashore on, on 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 Italian soil. This is this is good stuff. We don't want to miss this. I don't think really, do we? All right, ladies and gentlemen, as the camera clips into the ship, uh, this is going to be an interesting one. Here we are in our longboats. Um, we're attacking under the cover of very heavy fog. And there's a reason I elected to do that. It's because the Romans do have some military vessels defending this town. And any virtually any kind of military ship can instantly sink a transport just by ramming it. Which is not good. We could lose a few units here to marauding uh, Roman triremes and whatnot. Um, admittedly, I didn't consider this before. I impetuously made the decision to attack here. But that is a problem we're going to have to contend with. I'm attacking under the cover of fog, which will conceal us a bit. And I'm hoping I can get most of us to the shore and off the boats before that becomes an issue. That's my general idea, anyway. That's what I'm thinking. All the way over here, the cavalry obviously seem to have gotten off, off, off onto the coast somewhere further down because you can't deploy cavalry on ships in this game. So when you've got cavalry in, a, in an amphibious assault, they always appear on land. So we'll just say that them plus the baggage train dismounted or disembarked somewhere a bit further down the coast and they've made their way up here. Which I think includes Magarix himself, does it not? Um, where is he? There he is. So yeah, Mag the king and his uh, cavalry and the baggage train, they're over here. I'm going to just move them back a little bit so they're behind this hill where they can't be spotted. There we go. Um, more reinforcements in the form of um, Iarkos's cavalry are going to appear on the map around about here-ish, it looks like. And Iarkos's boats are going to appear on along here as well. Um, I don't know how this is going to go. This could be kind of horrific, honestly, but we'll give it a try and we'll see what happens. Let's go. Let's try and get offloaded. Um, I think the enemy ships are just over there. I don't know where they're going. Are they are they disembarking to help Our defend the town? They might be. I hope they are. Ooh, that's a big mistake from the Romans. I'm going to go ahead and say it's the fog that's uh, helping us with that. They don't know that we're out there. They've just their scouts have spotted Gallic cavalry making their way up the coast and now they're withdrawing to the town to disembark and defend it on foot from Magarix's cavalry advance party. Oh no, 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 they've realized, damn it, they've realized they're changing direction. They're coming this way. Oh crap. <laughs> no. I don't know how we're going to deal with this. I guess our best bet is to try and board them. Let's 
Head, yeah, they're headed straight for... Unless they're trying to get off on the beach here? I'm not sure. It's difficult to say what they're trying to do right now. They would have spotted us by now, though. Hey, look. Gallic longships coming out of the fog. I think they're headed for the beach. I think they want to disembark here. Unless they've changed their mind at the very least. What are they doing? Yeah, they've spotted us. They're headed straight. Maybe I should have just waited. Maybe I should have stayed in the fog and waited. Uh, right. Ready and eager. Ready. There's the Akos. Pangas train. There's the chariots. Heavy cavalry. Let's get the cavalry running over here. Looks like the big Roman ship is disembarking. Transport's ready and waiting. Can you try and board them? I'll give it a go. Yeah, the big ship has disembarked. The uh, one of our units has used all its ammunition. The whatever the ship is called, I'm not sure with the two towers on it. Their um, veteran marines have gotten out onto the onto the land. It's probably one of the first like proper decent Roman infantry units we're ever going to actually fight. Trying to get you to board, but you're doing a cack handed job of it there, lads. Is this thing on fire? What's going on there? Will you just board it for fuck's sake? Before it sinks you? 50% damage. Board it! What are you doing? You know what? Fuck it. Just, just land. Just get off the boat. I don't know what it is you guys are playing at, but you're getting sunk. That's what's happening. Yep. Fantastic. I was, I was. This, this is exactly what I was worried about. At least we got most of the thorax infantry off. Would you just board them? Why is naval combat the way that it is in this game? It's so fucking bad. Board the enemy, please. Board them. Board them. Board the enemy ship. It's not that hard. Just do it. Like that. Thank you. Fucking hell. There we go. We've got a couple of boarding actions going on. I don't know how it's going to go for us because these aren't marines. These are just land troops. I don't know if seasickness is a thing in this. I know it is an Attila. But I don't know if it's a thing in Rome too. Actually, get over there. Are you still de disembarking? Aren't you? Yeah. Okay. Those marines are making their way towards the city. Uh, now this is an interesting problem, isn't it? It does have walls. <laughs> it does have walls. Okay, we're winning the uh, little boarding action over here, it looks like. Looks like we set the boat on fire. We're all clambering off. Okay, that's them dealt with. Shame it came at the cost of an entire unit of uh, thorax infantry, but... We only need somebody to disembark inside the city, aren't we? That's what we need to do. We need you guys to actually disembark in the port, don't we? Into the harbour. So that you can get up there and try and open the gates for us. That's what needs to happen right now. A lot's going to depend on this, as a matter of fact. Actually, come on. 
Get on with it. Down goes those Roman ships. Right, nice work there, lads. Nice work. Let's get you offloaded. Rest of the warriors are waiting on the beach. Some of them are covered in blood, and I'm not entirely sure why or how that happened. Probably because they got hit by projectiles on their way in from one of the other Roman ships, I guess. Um, let's... Let's move everybody down here. No rush. Gentle canter. Don't need to run. But let's get everybody in one place. Luckily, we've got this big-ass hill, which is uh, totally concealing us from the enemy, along with the fog. Jolly handy, isn't it? I think the weather really threw us a bone on that one, honestly. Right. You guys making your way towards the harbour? Yes, you are. Oh, I'm noticing this here. They've got a baluster up on the walls here. Which may take some pot shots at our boats on the way in. That'll be interesting to see. Alright, well, so far so good. Alright folks, um, yeah, the Romans are waiting for us. Um, <laughs> well, clearly they seem to get the impression that this is something that would happen. Hurry up boys, I need you landing there in force. Uh, we may need to send you reinforcement, I didn't anticipate this necessarily being a thing, but... Oh dear. Get you guys over this way. Go, go, go. Alright. We're getting off the boats. It's happening. Thorax infantry would have been better for this, I think, but never mind. They're currently stuck outside the walls. Unless we can burn our way through? I don't remember if that's a thing we can do in this game. Can we try and burn the gate down? No. No, we can't. Alright, it's all on the you guys then. In our favor. I'm just gonna get squished by the boat. I feel like they ought to get squished by the boat. <laughs> Alright, it's kicking off. We've got cavalry, which actually does make me glad we have spearmen, admittedly. Alright, the boats are getting out of here. Hopefully making room for us to bring up some more. At the moment though, we've got a tough little fight on our hands right here in the middle of the harbour. Yes, let's get into a spear wall and face the wrong way. What a brilliant idea. You guys are doing the same thing? Yeah, of course you are. Egypts. There we go. That's a little more organized. Yeah. 
All right, there we go. Now we're looking a bit more disciplined. Except for you guys. You guys are just a mess. Formation breach. Yeah, that's not good. We need to try and get you guys reformed. A little bit. Here we go. game let me let me let me do this please reform the line there we go get to work just hold out until we can bring more people in they're on their way Losing decisively, that's not good. Yeah, the formation breach still. At least you guys are in better shape. Yeah, we're definitely outnumbered, but we're better quality troops, so. Guys, Sartes, you know what? You guys might be just the, what the doctor ordered, frankly. We are Transport ships, I. Really, what we need is to, we need to get somebody to sneak out here and make a dash for the gate and then try and capture it. Easier said than done, though. They've got units in reserve. Oh no, boys, what are you doing? Try and get this sorted out. I don't, we need you, your formation to not be breached. There we go, that's a little more like it. Reform. Formation breached again. Is it because of this guy here? It's because of this little idiot here, isn't it? There we go. Reform, reform. Come on. How is your formation still breached? I'm, com I'm really confused, honestly, by that. Your formation is breached as well. You're fine. Is this boat stuck? Oh my god, that's just all that's all we need. A glitched out boat. Is it because they've got guys flanking around the side? Maybe that's it, I don't know. I'm not entirely sure how the whole formation breach thing works. Okay, we got some of the Romans starting to waver now, that's good. Reinforcements are here. Right, yeah, formation's no longer breached. Yours is. So, helps on the way. Okay, that. Oh my god, it's flashbacks to when Rome 2 originally came out. This used to happen all the time. Land ships away! <laughs> oh dear. So goofy. You're taking fire from the towers, I think we are. Alright, boys. Get stuck in naked fanatics. Scare the enemy, and you've got excellent attack as well, which is what's going to really help us here, I think. Galatians. Yep, some of the Romans are already running away. Good stuff. 
stuff. Good stuff. Alright, let's see uh, if we can get the rest of you. Ooh, Thoriki tie. I got a unit of you guys still, huh? You better get around there. I'm, 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 I feel iffy about disembarking anybody else yet until in, ca in case I need to bring them around here. You know? Okay, yeah, more wavering Italian town guard. Oh, they're sending in the Italian citizens, oh boy. <laughs> Don't mind the damn beach longship. Drop out of shield wall and push. Push, push, push. Kill these citizens. I just noticed he was using an axe. Yeah, so they do switch to axes when they're not using their spears, that's interesting. Okay, yeah, the citizens are legging it. This is our window here, isn't it, really? Although I say that, they're bringing in even more. All right, reform, reform, reform. Right. You guys just hold the line there for a moment. How are you guys doing? Are you tired? Yeah, very tired at this point. That's right, you're doing a fantastic job. More wavering Romans. That's what we like to see. Slow going, this isn't it? Look, oh, one of them has just died. One, another one has just died. Another one has just died. Okay, some of them are starting to drop. It's very slow though. Please just break so I can move up. Hell, you know what? Let's just get around them anyway. Ah, they finally broke. There we go. Spears. Get oh, I love the pathfinding in the towns, huh? <laughs> oh dear. Can we sneak on up past the side here? Get really right behind these fellas. Do you reckon we can sneak? Oh, I forgot you guys have javelins. You can just chuck into the backs of the enemy while you're at it. That's not bad. Yeah, how about it? Just chuck your javelins at them while you're, while you're about it as well. Point blank range. Love to see it. That'll put a dent in them.
Uh, One of our units has used I didn't really order you guys to get stuck in the melee just yet, but you seem to have done it anyway. You geniuses. Whatever. Come on, get your charge bonus. Please actually charge, though. That's the, that's the important bit, boys. Yeah, there you go. We're not playing Medieval 2. You guys will actually charge properly. <laughs> One of our units has used all its ammunition. Yeah, we're just cutting them down as they try to flee. Break the shield wall, advance. We've got them surrounded, boys. Now we just need to get that gate open, and then it's all over for the Romans, pretty much. Can we sneak somebody in there? Maybe we can. You guys. Your new objective is to try and take us that gate. These are some of Magrix's best veterans, aren't they, as well? The silver chevrons. You guys want to disembark? Well, they, I think they're stuck. Which is not ideal. Never mind. Oh my god, the gate's actually open. Um, although I'm... Gates are weird in Rome 2 and Attila, so I'm gonna tr just gonna try and capture it properly anyway. You guys are just totally stuck, aren't you? Whatever. They're taking fire from the towers. How many Romans are left? They've got their balusters on the walls. I'm not seeing a ton of other stuff. March you guys up the beach a little further. Bring up the cavalry as well. I'm going to have them rush through the gate at the earliest opportunity, I think. Hell, once they're in the walls, they can dismount if they want to, but I want them in there. Alright, there we go. You guys want to move up there and help them take it as well? Form a shield wall if you like. I don't know if it'll help you at all. I'm taking casualties. But uh, we are capturing the gatehouse. It's official. Probably going to lose quite a few guys to all these arrows incoming, unfortunately, but not much to be done about it. They stop shooting once it goes neutral. They do, don't they? Excellent. Oh, hello, you two. You want to get involved? What a state. <laughs> I don't even know how this happened. we've made. Well, I'm glad that didn't turn out to be a bit of a Gallipoli. It's actually gone rather well. And... Any second now. We have captured a tower! Hell yeah, we have. Backwell. You know what that means. Get moving, boys.
Oh, thanks, we found some Romans. It's the veteran Marines, as a matter of fact. Let's see if a good old cavalry charge can't sort them out. They are not taking quite as many casualties as I would have liked, I must admit. Formation is probably, yeah, breached as heck. That's for sure. Horsemen! I understood. That should hopefully do some damage. He says. This is, does no damage at all. What the heck, guys? Um, okay. Turns out Roman veteran marines are virtually cavalry proof. Who would have thought it? I mean, they are dying, it's just annoyingly slowly. Yeah, okay, we are making a bit of an impact. I've just been playing a lot of Medieval 2 lately, I think that's the problem. I'm used to Medieval 2, like, heavy cavalry charges and how utterly devastating they are by comparison. I've been a bit spoiled. I send you guys in as well, that wasn't actually part of the plan. Galatians. But they're wavering now anyway. Losing decisively. Formation. Ah. We'll come on, come on, boys. Come on, just give up. You know you want to. The enemy general is dead. Well, that'll certainly help. Yeah, there they go. Battle's not over, though, still. Can't help but notice that. Aha. I see why. All right. Need you to. Can you guys go around this way, please? Is there any other way around there? I don't think there is. Is there? Oh, they've got more up here as well. Oh gosh. Okay, there's actually quite a lot here. I thought we whittled them down to a few units, but apparently not. They're all cowering over there by the western, sorry, east gate. All right, everybody. Thorax infantry, um, we're going to need you up here to do what you guys do best, which is slug away at the enemy until they're all dead. Because uh, there's a whole bunch of them up here. I can't see them right now, but they are there. Can we get a unit? Of Get you guys to come over here and do a bit of scouting. Of gold. There we go. I do like this view. Oh god, there was a tower over there. Alright, hold on. You guys go over there and capture that, please. Although... Can you capture that? I'm not sure if you can. There's a little e red X symbol, which seems to indicate to me that you can't capture that. Yeah. Better send the infantry up there to do it. Meanwhile, what do you guys see? Oh yeah, you've got eyes on them. Yeah, most of the town garrison seems to have withdrawn to up here for some reason. A little irritating, but never mind. Maybe we just gotta wait for the... Uh, for the heavy infantry to get up there, because it's the only thing that's going to really dislodge them, I think. 
You guys do look pretty cool coming through that gate, though, I gotta admit. Waving your standards high. Hell yeah. The enemy's coming up to meet us, apparently. Bit unexpected, but there it is. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Format, boys. How about it? We could probably put you in defensive formation, but honestly, I don't think it's worth bothering. Get stuck in Thorax Infantry. You are the best unit, well, best infantry unit in our entire faction roster. That time you showed us why. They're definitely showing us why. <laughs> any favors. I just kind of noticed those guys hanging there in the background though. I thought why not make use of them. Beautiful. What can I say? See some cool finisher moves. I like seeing these cool finishers. Unfortunately, most of them are just sort of dropping dead at the moment. Oh, there we go. Right in the gut. Oh, and a, <laughs> and a bump on the noggin as well to finish him off. I love it. Ah, oh, he did it twice. Twice in a row. Well done, that man. <laughs> Goodness me. Oh, gosh. Right in the neck. Brutal. Goodness me. Yeah, you guys are just going through these Romans like... Galatian Royal Guard. A knife through butter. It's quite a certain bad, bad man from a very good movie. Galatians! Sorry, no, that was, wasn't a knife through butter, was it? It was a bone through butter. Wait, hang on a minute. No, they go through bone like butter. That was it when he was referring to the, the pigs and... It's from Snatch. If you've never watched it, it's an amazing movie. You should totally watch it. Okay, I don't know why they sallied forth like they did, but it was a horrific mistake, wasn't it? We lost one guy in this unit. That's it. That's that. That was the sum total of our casualties. There, one, one guy we lost, and we killed all of them. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Although, yeah, up with that, I will not put. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, who's wavering? Who? Where? Oh my god. One of my units of cavalry is getting assaulted. 
a sneaky unit of town guard. Well, well, well. Uh, you guys better get up there and deal with that. Hell, I wonder if you can... Yeah, you guys go around there as well. Meanwhile... Combat even. Doesn't feel like it should be even. Well, this is some very brave Italian swordsmen, what can I say? They're dying very bravely. Point. Yeah, yeah, we lost this over here. It's all right. Don't panic. And there's the cavalry into their backs. Yeah, I'm not keen on all the incoming fire from those towers, I must admit. They could have made really life difficult, really life difficult for us in this siege. Uh, yeah, okay. Master Yoda, whatever you say. Um, they could have really made our lives difficult in this siege if they'd actually, you know, not spread out their units all over the place like weirdos. Our men flee the field of battle. This is a shameful display. Who's fleeing? Is that cavalry, probably? That's just embarrassing. Enjoy massacring the town guards while you've got the chance here, boys, because uh, very soon Legio 2 Equestris, I think it is, is on its way directly towards us, and they have actual proper Roman soldiers in their army, so <laughs> you'll be fighting a different calibre of soldier pretty soon. Mess, boys, come on. Oh, hello. It's a unit of my cavalry that are routing. I'm not entirely sure why. <laughs> Where are you guys going? Where did you come from for that, for that matter? Gosh, here we are taking fire from those stupid towers. So annoying. Do have any siege weapons up here? No, it's just the towers. Bit of an annoying choke point, this. This unit of cavalry is just... insisting on getting itself even further killed. I don't know what's going on with that. Enjoy the spectacle, everybody. There's so much else for us to do at this point other than watch the show as we slowly fight our way towards the last enemies up there. How are things going over in this direction? Oh, they're going rather well. Eventually, surely, they're going to like, auto-surrender. You, you route enough of the enemy army, the rest will just give up. Apparently, we've not done that yet. Stabbed right in the gut. You left an opening, man. Shouldn't have done that. Oh, he's got two ganging up on him now, this lad. But he's got some help. There we are. 
Oh, stabbed right in the neck by an Italian town guardsman. That's that's an embarrassing way to go, man. Well done, that man right there. It's not probably not going to be long for this world, but I'm watching his career with great interest. Who's going to get him, I wonder? He's hanging in there. He's covered in blood. He's, he's, given, he's given as good as he can get, isn't he? He's got like three goals on him right now. Oh, he's fallen back. He's managed to get some friends in front of him. Oh, he knocked back again. He's having a breather now. They're putting up a remarkably good fight, these Italian swordsmen. I'm kind of annoyed about it, frankly. going on over here with these what is this what are they doing they just keep running backwards and forwards up and down like this absolute madness i tell you okay the swordsmen are starting to break and waver losing decisively yep they bloody should be going elsewhere We're capturing this victory point and the sword's going to break in and running and this lot are about to go as well that was the last unit we needed yep, there we go finally it's over Let's save that replay shall we what are we on now LP22 Tarentum Falls Brilliant. 795 losses. Not bad considering one of those was an entire unit of Thorax infantry that just went to the bottom of the ocean. Um, yeah, not too bad. And a unit of cavalry that just got massacred because I didn't pay enough attention to them apparently. Um, yeah, not too bad. For, for an amphibious assault as well where the enemy actually had naval vessels defending the place. Gosh, it could have been a lot worse, actually, now I think about it. I mean, if I was the Romans defending there, I would have absolutely... I would have caused some absolute havoc with those uh, with those three Navy ships. They could have sunk so many of our transports with them before I was able to do anything about it. Luckily, I think maybe, sort of, hopefully, yeah, the, the fog helped us there. Because... The, the, the Roman Navy ships, they, they just sort of... It was weird, wasn't it? Because they were kind of, like, rowing around like they didn't really know what they wanted to do. Like, they were about to disembark on the beach and then suddenly they spotted us and changed their minds or whatever. And then the main the main big ship, the one that could have done tons of damage, the one with these guys on, that one actually, they did disembark on the beach, which was probably a very, very poor decision by them. Anyway. Gosh, these loading screens take a while, don't they? There we go. Um, there we are. Uh, we will, of course, loot it. It will loot the crap out of it. Your orders? Ladies and gentlemen, we have a foothold in Italy. It's officially happening. Oh, uh, no, don't do that. Leaving the ship. We cannot do that. All right, boys. Um, hopefully, yeah, yeah. The thorax infantry, prediction in particular, did not take too many casualties there. The Caureos got a little bit more battered because they had to do that initial assault on the beach. The but I'm satisfied our army is in still relatively good shape. Um, what are the mercenaries here like? Do you know what? Do you know what? Actually, um, let's. Merge the ones we can. Disband you. I want to make some room here. There we go. Because I really want to hire some mercenaries. I want to hire some... Uh, some mercenary dudes. Because I like the idea... What if we got Etruscan mercenary spearmen? And we've got Italian mercenary spearmen. Etruscan Sam Knights and other Italian peoples have long fought each other for control of the peninsula. Um, I can't imagine these guys are that amazing stat-wise. Yeah, they don't really look it. 
However, the Etruscans are noticeably better, I must admit. Um, I really like the idea of some of the native Italians joining us to stick it to Rome, basically. That's kind of what I'm doing there. I'm thinking of these guys less as mercenaries and more as, like, you know, Sam Knights and Etruscans and, and um, Tarentines that are, are volunteering to uh, to help us fight the Romans, essentially, and joining our side in the way that they did when, when Hannibal invaded. So that's kind of what I'm thinking there with these guys. And Abelios, would you like to go and have a look at these Romans for me? Oh, hello. Oh, we could be in for a heck of a battle in the upcoming turn. Legio 3 Adutrix. Legio 2 Equestris. Can we get a better look at them? We can. Okay, so they're Polybian, mostly, except for they do have a few Marian units in there sprinkled around. Alla Legionaria. Yeah, Marian Legionary Cavalry. They've got a Marian First Cohort and a unit of Marian Legionaries. In addition to their Triari, Princapes, and, and Hestatian. Oh, we got early Princapes and late Princapes as well. What an interesting mix. <laughs> Same with you guys. Uh, you've got a lot of Italian units. Okay. Yeah, this is more of a Camillan army right here. It's a weird mix, but it's just because of the way this works. The AI isn't able to reform its own units. There's the Primus de Pares. That's, uh, that's Lucius Julius Libo himself. Um, and that right there is um, Gaius Cornelius Scipio. Hello, Scipio. How you doing? Cousin of a certain... Um, of a certain Roman that we happen to know. Spicy. I didn't know he'd be here, actually, but there he is. And then we've got Flavius Achilleus Capito over here as well. Bringing up some reserve units. And then we've got Leg Legia 1 Italica, led by Decimus Junius Brutus. Hello, Brutus. Um, okay, yeah, this is... Ooh. Ooh. Okay, potentially the Romans could... Uh, cause massive problems for us right now. What would you have? If they bring these three armies to bear, and maybe even bring up this extra one as well. Oh boy. Magrix and friends are going to be in some serious trouble. Warriors, oh. I live to serve the people of God. Uh, problem is their reinforcements are going to take a while to get here. Hmm. We can't really recruit any new units over here either. Closest we can get is maybe Nysos. We recruit an army here. Led by... This guy, Adgenios. What's his trait? Plus one authority. Okay, you. What can you recruit? You can bring the legionaries. Okay. That's something at least. So we got reinforcements inbound. For the, the tricky part, though, is, is obviously that the um, and your ancestors. got a lot of angry Romans <laughs> headed to our position. Oh boy! <laughs> uh, you know, what? I'm going to put King Magrix inside the city walls in anticipation of us potentially having a siege on our hands. Um, I'm wondering if I should put Iarcos's guys in the harbour. I'm going to drop a little manual save here. In case this doesn't work out very well. Warriors all. Get like that. Up, and, uh, yeah. We might have to defend uh, Tarentum from three potentially Roman legions. <laughs> it's exciting. Ladies and gentlemen, on this cliffhanger, on that bombshell, ladies and gentlemen, as uh, Magrix and and friends prepare for potentially a devastating siege, um, as our new Galatian legionaries try and slowly make their way over here to be able to help. 
It's going to be a question of can we hold out for long enough for the reinforcements to arrive? Potentially. Uh, there's always there's always room for the Roman AI to do something really stupid and uh, not take advantage of this situation, but we'll see, I guess. Because um, Brutus could decide to sail off to North Africa, in which case then it's way less of a problem. It'd still be a heck of a battle on our hands, but it will still it won't won't be a won't be one that potentially ends up with us losing our faction leader in the process, so Yeah. Oh boy. Uh, I um I look forward to it anyway, either way, whatever happens. <laughs> Folks, have a good one. I'll catch you in the next one.